Digit card to... Keep it on, K-I-O-N. Allegations of sexual abuse continue to rock local Catholic, Catholic churches. Tonight, the bishop speaks out. Speculation becomes reality as a pair of Central Coast schools are scheduled to be shut down. We'll hear what parents and students have to say. And plans for a new real estate development could leave some dogs and their owners with no place to go. KION News 46 at 6.30 starts now. You're watching KION 46, your eye on the Central Coast. Now, news that hits home. KION News 46 at 6.30. More problems for the Catholic Church. Thanks for keeping it on KION. I'm Brian Special. And I'm Rosalinda Roman. The Bishop of the Catholic Diocese of Monterey is in Salinas tonight talking about sexual abuse. So far, 13 people have filed claims against the diocese saying they were sexually abused by seven priests. Most are said to have taken place between the 1950s and 1970s. Tonight, Monterey Bishop Sylvester Ryan is talking to parishioners. And Kevin Bollinger is live in Salinas at the Madonna del Sasso Church with details. Kevin. Well, Rosalinda, this is all part of a four-day tour by Bishop Ryan. The goal is to open up communication lines with Catholics on the church's ongoing cases of sexual abuse within the church. Tonight, the stop is in Salinas, as you said, at Madonna del Sasso Church here on Laurel and Mariel in Salinas. Now, the focus is going to be on legal and financial impacts that all of these cases are going to have on the Catholic Church, what it's had on it in the past, and what it will have on it in the future. They'll also present a local report on the church's charter for the protection of children and young people, a pledge by bishops to prevent sexual abuse of children by all those who minister in the name of the church. So we're going to be talking about the broad issues of the church as a whole and also a little bit here in the Monterey Diocese and what it all means to the people here locally. Of course, the Monterey Diocese covers a broad range, Santa Cruz, San Benito, Monterey, and San Luis Obispo counties. Everything gets underway about 30 minutes from now. It is open to the public, any and all who want to come down here. Again, it's at the Madonna del Sasso Church here on Laurel Avenue in Marion. We'll have a complete wrap-up talking to the bishop and getting reaction tonight at 11 o'clock. We're live in Salinas. I'm Kevin Bollinger, KION News 46. All right. Thanks, Kevin. And the Diocese of Monterey may have to start selling off its real estate holdings in order to settle those sexual abuse lawsuits. Just this month, the diocese paid $760,000 to settle a single case. Money they say will come from resources that they already have. Elizabeth Valente has that part of the story. You're looking at over 100 properties, uh, mostly along the coast. And this is just Monterey County. So if you're counting San Luis Obispo and Santa Cruz, they all have gone up very, very nicely. It's like winning the lotto. Monterey realtor Lawrence Samuels is amazed at just how much property the Diocese of Monterey owns in Monterey County. He says they could own close to $100 million worth of real estate. Just counting just a few of them that they have prices on it, you're looking at probably about $5 million just on four or five of them. There's 40 on this page. Diocese of Monterey spokesman Kevin Trebinsky says a majority of the properties were donated. Sometimes it's been purchased, many times it's been donated to the diocese, and it's been held in anticipation of being able to do some expansion throughout the diocese. Now that the diocese is defending itself against seven lawsuits relating to sexual abuse cases, the church is considering mortgaging some of its real estate to fund settlements with 13 alleged victims. Vacant land, some developed property, the difficulty in saying what decisions will be made is that we don't have dollar figures for settlements or judgments. That should play out in the months and perhaps years to come. It's more than just schools and hospitals and churches that the Diocese of Monterey might end up auctioning. It's also homes like this one that they purchased just 17 months ago right here in Salinas. It's only, it's only been a couple of years, but it's still it's probably went up 50, 60,000 in just a few years. The diocese says with real estate going up, church and school buildings would be the last thing on their list to sell. We'd like to come out of this at the end of this and, and maintain the integrity of our parishes. In Monterey, Elizabeth Valente, KION 46. And the diocese feel, fears that settling each of the remaining 13 cases could cost from three to six million dollars each, with the total bill potentially reaching 65 million dollars. Federal agencies are hoping to catch more sex offenders through a new partnership. Immigration and Customs officers will be working with the National Center for the Missing and Exploited Children. 
It is all part of a government crackdown on child sex abuse dubbed Operation Predator. You are looking at video there of a raid last November when agents arrested several people across the state, including at least a dozen sex offenders on the Central Coast. Officers say the effort so far has led to 1,700 arrests. Santa Cruz police are warning women to be on the lookout for a man they say sexually assaulted two other women. Go ahead and take a good look at this. Women reported a man who looks like this touched their breast, then ran off. Police working two separate incidents. One happened near Walnut and Grover Streets. A second case happened near Santa Cruz High between 7.15 and 7.30 p.m. New at 6.30 tonight, a Santa Cruz man charged with killing a puppy with a golf club takes the stand in his own defense. Stephen Jackson testified he was just trying to protect his three young children from the dog, who he says was constantly barking and scaring them. This is one of the dogs right there. This looks like the dog, at least. He says he didn't take a full swing with his golf club, instead caught the puppy with his backswing, which he says surprised him. He also says he planned to return the puppy to its owners. Witnesses say they saw Jackson take two full swings at the dog. The dog's skull was crushed and it had to be put to sleep. The prosecution is expected to cross-examine Jackson tomorrow. Jackson is charged with felony animal cruelty and witness intimidation. He faces prison time if convicted. The Santa Cruz City School Board has made a decision to close two elementary schools in June in a desperate attempt to balance the budget. The board voted 5-2 to two last night to close Branch of Forte Elementary, turning it into a base for four alternative education schools. Natural Bridges Elementary also closing, but will remain empty pending agreement on a proposal for an alternative use. Now, Wes Sims got some reaction to all that today. He joins us live in Santa Cruz with that part of the story. Hey, Wes. Hi, Brian. A lot of disappointment among parents here in Santa Cruz, especially because of what the district put them through just one year ago. It was January 2003 when the Santa Cruz City Schools Board first suggested closing two elementary schools to reverse growing deficits. Parents felt railroaded, and the district backed down, proposing Measure B, a $6.3 million parcel tax that was supposed to close the gap. Now, Brands of Forty and Natural Bridges Elementary Schools are getting the axe. That irony hasn't been lost on the parents. It's just really hard to have a bond that we passed and we paid for, and we went ahead and... Um and put towards the, the community and it wasn't used for what they said it was should have been used for and um the school is closing and it's another year of heartbreak it really is heartbreaking santa cruz voters were told last year that if they supported a parcel tax measure all six elementary schools would stay open but the school board president tells us a lot of external forces have kept the board from keeping that promise external forces like the state budget crisis that led to the gubernatorial recall election as well as continued losses locally. Natural Bridges Elementary Principal Brenda Payne today tried to explain that to her students. That students have left the area due to it being an expensive place for people to live, that um, people have lost jobs over time, that companies have moved, and that the schools have gotten much smaller. The principal also led students on an exercise to explore new uses for natural bridges. One second graders saw this as an opportunity to solve a larger problem in Santa Cruz. Um, I was thinking that maybe this campus could be a homeless shelter for people who don't have homes, and I think it might be, make the community a better place if we had this to be the homeless shelter. Well, the school board can expect to hear a lot more creative ideas on what to do with that school between now and June when school gets out for the summer. Reporting live in Santa Cruz, I'm Wes Sims, KION 46. Wes, don't you think sometimes if we just turned it over to second graders, the politics and everything would just be better? This young woman was so well-spoken. <laughs> Isn't that something else? All right, Wes Sims reporting live. Thanks, Wes. Principal uh, of Branza Forty Elementary, Bessie Hamilton, says three-quarters of the students at her school are below the poverty level and walk to school. She's concerned about the district having enough money in the budget to bust them to new schools. The Pajaro Valley Unified School District has voted to move a bilingual program out of Alianza School in Watsonville. The district will move the program to another campus about five miles away and convert Alianza to a middle school. Many students, parents, and teachers are opposed to this move because Alianza offers the only two-way bilingual immersion program in the entire school district. Trustees say the program would be just as successful at the other location 
although we have talked to a lot of people who say they worry that the kids that would be best served by this are in the immediate area and don't want to have to walk or bus to another location. Which would seem to make sense. Yeah. Still ahead on KION, I ask you this, where will the dogs go? Where will the dogs go? Where will they go? go? Pooch lovers Sounds on like the peninsula. It, don't oh, even no, try let it. Them out. Pooch That's lovers right. on the peninsula are asking that question though as a development threatens a dog park. And a fire at a popular Central Coast restaurant leaves customers and the owner wondering whether things will ever be the same again. Keep it on KION. Do you have the right SUV? Is your Shady Powered Associates highest ranked full-size SUV in initial quality? The 2003 Chevy Suburban is. Is yours the best-selling large SUV in its class? Chevy Tahoe is. Now get 4,000 total cash back on the 2004 Suburban and Tahoe. Hurry offer ends 2204. Suburban and Tahoe, they're the right SUVs. See your local Chevy dealer today. For those who love the warmth of wood heat, Fireplace Extraordinaire offers EPA certified wood burning fireplaces that heat up to 3,500 square feet. Love a fire on the hearth and convenience? Fireplace Extraordinaire offers gas-burning fireplaces and inserts. For your warmth and pleasure, Fireplace Extraordinaire. Elegant, efficient fire. Visit the heating specialist at Coast Building Products at 45 North Main in Salinas. At Cicada, research is the foundation of a strong continued commitment to providing only the highest quality vegetable seeds. Successful growers have relied on Cicada quality for over 80 years. Increased performance from expanded varieties of Cicada seeds leads to a greater yield and larger grower profits. Contact TNC Supplies in Gilroy, Snow Seeds in Salinas, Santa Clara Seeds in Greenfield, and Santa Maria Seeds in Santa Maria. Quality in the Cicada tradition means only the best here. Water. It soothes us, refreshes us, gives us life. At Delray Supply, we help bring that water to you in beautiful, stylish, and practical ways. Let our experienced and very knowledgeable staff show you what our exclusive design center can do for your home. From our extensive plumbing supplies to the most elegant fixtures imaginable, discover what Monterey County contractors already know. Delray Supply in Seaside, the best way to bring the water to you. Tonight on The Late Show, Jay's throwing stuff off the roof. Plus, Jennifer Aniston and music from Ryan Adams. Tonight on The Late Show. An early morning fire out in, on a, in a popular Santa Cruz restaurant has the owner wondering if he can rebuild. The fire broke out at 4 o'clock this morning uh, at Cafe Brazil on Mission Street. Flames were shooting out of the attic roof when firefighters got to the scene. A second alarm was called to make sure that the fire didn't spread to surrounding structures. The owner told us that after 33 years here, he's waiting to see how bad it is before deciding if he can rebuild. The fire department estimates damage at $100,000. No cause has been determined. Dogs on the Monterey Peninsula could soon be saying goodbye to some of their freedom. The Lynn Rip Van Winkle Dog Park on the Pacific Grove Pebble Beach border is one of the last dog-friendly parks on the Central Coast. Owners and their animals go in there every day to socialize, but the Pebble Beach Company owns the land and is about to start developing it. And it's like a big community, a big family. We all know each other and each other's dogs. It's, it's fun, and I'm going to really miss this if they decide to tear it down. I know a lot of other people are, too. It's progress. It's change. And my dog's hearts are going to be broken. <laughs> Pebble Beach Company's talking about building 12 new employee housing units near Spanish Bay. Pebble Beach has been planning 10 new development sites since 2001. Updating you on a story we first brought you last night on KION about a special little puppy with special needs. His name is Andre, as you see him right there. You'll remember this three-month-old Australian cattle dog is looking for a permanent place to call home. He was born deaf, but the Animal Friends Rescue Project has him in a foster home where he is learning hand signals for sit, lay down, and stay. The group has received a few calls from people looking to adopt Andre. Now it'll check into the puppy's potential new owners to see where Andre will fit in best. He'll fit in anywhere. He will. 
Oh, well, I guess there, there's kind of a, a process to make sure that yeah. wherever he goes can really be patient and learn the hand signals. Right, and right. And if somebody doesn't get Andre, there's plenty of more animals oh, out right. there, too. Absolutely. So, be patient. Stay with us. We'll have a check on the Central Coast forecast when we come back. Meteorologist Pete Giddings in next with your eye on weather. Keep it on. Have you ever wanted to develop your artistic abilities? If so, you may already have the interest and desire needed to become a serious art student. To find out, simply call toll-free, and Art Instruction Schools will send you this enjoyable art test. There's no cost or obligation. Take the test at home in your spare time and mail it to us when you're done. Our experts will review and score your test. Since 1914, we've helped thousands of aspiring artists become more skilled, more confident, and more creative in their art. Whether you're interested in realism or fantasy, figure drawing or cartooning, you can pursue your vision under the expert guidance of our talented instructors. Call today for your free art test. We'll help you become a better artist. Call 1-800-292-9977. Remember the art of building a fire, the warmth and comfort of wood heat? Art has become science with Lopi's newest wood-burning products. You can heat your home with wood. Different lifestyle, the Ember Fire Burner achieves the impossible and transforms this gas-burning furnace into the heart heater of your dreams. Wood or gas, Lopi Heart Heaters, the heart of your home. Visit the heating specialist at Coast Building Products at 45 North Main in Salinas. It's thumbs up for America's favorite film critics. There was no reason for this film. We've seen it all before. One of the few Hollywood programs that dares to challenge Hollywood. And the two leads are adorable. But the movie is tiresome. Well-reasoned, thought-provoking. If you're buying it as a comedy, I guess, you could buy to it. agree it is a comedy. Smart, confident. I found a real juice and a real passion in this material. I thought this thing was a howler. They put the movies in focus. Ebert and Roper. Ebert and Roper. Saturdays at 5.30 on KION 46. You're watching News That Hits Home, KION News 46 at 6.30. Thanks for keeping it on, KION 46. We are at 53 degrees, 86% humidity. The wind's from the west at 6 and the pressure of 30.17 and steady. Today's lows and highs, a little bit of ups and downs by a degree for most folks, but there were two big winners and losers. Gilroy lost 5 degrees, and Watsonville right across the way picked up 5 degrees. Somebody's got to pay the mortgage. We went from 37s at Hollister and um, Carmel Valley to 62s at Watsonville and King City. Those 60s are going to be as rare as hen's teeth tomorrow. This 41, two degrees above the seasonal average at Santa Cruz this morning. That was the only temperature that was above seasonal average. Everybody else on the cool side, and cool we are going to stay. We're cool now under the double-barreled high, and cooler air is yet to enter into the picture. The front itself didn't have the oomph to make it as far south as us. It's dying as it moves to the north on the southern end. And because of that, we'll get clouds, but we won't get rain, but we will get cool. On the bay, westerly winds tomorrow to 10 knots, seas 2 feet, swells westerly 3 to 8 feet at 14 second intervals, about 5 feet of difference between your tides. Partly cloudy tonight, northerly winds 5 to 10 miles an hour. They'll go around to the west after midnight, 36 to 46 the range. Then tomorrow, mostly cloudy, 49 to 59, with northwesterly winds from 5 to 15. Picked up another minute of sunshine. Yep. Down the valley, 57, 58, Carmel Valley the same. Around the water's edge, 54, Big Sur, 55, Seaside, everybody else, 56, 57. And then if you go up to the higher climbs, you're going to find a 52 at Ben Loman, 53, Felton and Scotts Valley, 54, Aptos. And then from there, it's everybody with those 55, 56, 57s, no 60s, 55 in the water. And looking out ahead, there are the clouds for tomorrow. Saturday and Sunday, partly cloudy. Monday, rain. Decent looking system. It was the one behind the one I showed you dying. And Tuesday, a possibility of rain, though I'm not in love with it, so I made the icon very small. And temperatures, once they cooled out of those 60s and 50s, we're now in the 40s and 50s. And it looks like we're going to stay that way for a while. So you're saying that rain at the AT&T Pebble Beach is easier to find than hen's teeth? Is oh, yeah. Is that what he was saying? Something like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, good find, to know. You ever find a tooth in a hen? I'll, I'll look next time okay. and see if I can.
They don't have them. I Trust hope me. not. You ever tried to open the mouth of a hen? No. Oh, think yeah. So. Easy if you chop the head off. Okay. How do you think you eat There's something new every night from this guy. I tell you what. More to come here on KIO N46. Still ahead. New developments in the Michael Jackson case. What else is new? We'll tell you about it coming up. That's right, and if you are tired of shelling out the big bucks to pay for college textbooks, you're not alone, and there may be some help on the way. It's next on KION 46. What's new with you? Maybe it's those new shoes. Tip-tap towing to the beat of your new mixer. Whipping up a new recipe that will win a new heart tonight. It's all new. It's all you. It's all at Macy's Super Saturday. The Salinas Californian. It's where you live. Every day we bring you news about your world. The pictures, the stories, the events, and the people who are a part of life right here in the Salinas Valley. Local news from your community and around the world. Sports, business, entertainment, and lots more. The Salinas Californian. For convenient home delivery, call 758-2000 today. The Salinas Californian. It's where you live. You're watching News That Hits Home, KION News 46 at 6.30. College and university students in California are being gouged by textbook publishers. At least that is the, the charge leveled across the state today by CalPERG. That's the California Public Institute Interest Research Group, rather. Representatives from CalPERG rep uh, presented their case today at UC Santa Cruz, suggesting that textbooks are rendered obsolete prematurely. They claim students are forced to purchase new books costing well over $100 when an online update would allow them to buy used books costing much less. And it is not the university's fault. Well, not necessarily with the university, but the, the publishing industry, how they use gimmicks to inflate the prices of textbooks. For example, we have a textbook over there. It's the Calculus Edition 5 versus the Calculus Edition 4. The most, significant aspect, or the most significant change that we found in the Calculus Edition 5 was that there were new math problems that were added. CD-ROMs were also added, raising the price of the book to $135. An assembly member from Southern California plans to introduce legislation to encourage publishers to keep textbooks on the market longer by providing paper or online supplements instead of producing new textbooks. Students at Foothill Elementary School in Monterey are jumping for health. Check this out. The kids collected pledges for the American Heart Association today. The students were assigned to groups, then took turns jumping to their favorite tunes. Each child jumping one minute and resting for three. The event helps those with heart problems and teaches the kids the importance of of exercise. That'll make you tired after uh, not too long, that's for sure. Well, the t-shirts and pajamas are meant to be funny, but they are stirring up a lot of controversy. One of the products in question is this t-shirt you see right here. As you can see, it says, boys are stupid, throw rocks at them. The girls' clothing and accessories are made by a company in Florida. Some protesters are angry, saying the themes are anti-male, and they want them pulled off the shelves. At least three retail chains, including Claire's and Tilly's, say they will no longer carry that merchandise. I don't get it. What's wrong with that? <laughs> I didn't think you would have a problem with that. I don't Especially know Especially if the boy is Brian. Yeah. <laughs> she see us after the show. All right. Well, your eye on the West is coming up next. Did Michael Jackson use pills and booze to lure young boys into his bed? We'll check that out. Details coming up. Plus, the mayor of San Jose suffers a stroke in the middle of his State of the City address. We'll show it to you next on KION 46. Stay with us. Have you ever wanted to develop your artistic abilities? If so, you may already have the interest and desire needed to become a serious art student. To find out, simply call toll-free, and Art Instruction Schools will send you this enjoyable art test. Since 1914, we've helped thousands of aspiring artists become more skilled, more competent, and more creative in their art. Call today for your free art test. We'll help you become a better artist. Call 1-800-292-9977. You're watching News That Hits Home, KION News 46 at 6.30. Your eye on the West tonight, San Jose Mayor Ron Gonzalez in fair condition after suffering a minor stroke last night during his State of the City address. <clears throat> Excuse me.
Now, Gonzalez apparently suffering the stroke about halfway through the speech. Shortly after, a woman took the podium saying the rest of the program was canceled. The mayor underwent an MRI and an angiogram at the hospital. Aides to Gonzalez say he had been in good health right up until the stroke. Michael Jackson reportedly served soda cans filled with wine to young boys he wanted to seduce. Vanity Fair magazine says the singer called the white wine Jesus juice and the red wine Jesus blood. In the same article, Jackson's former financial advisor says the pop star's ex-wife threatened to go public with his secrets unless he paid her at least $8 million. Debbie Rowe was the surrogate mother of two of Jackson's children, but was not their biological mother. The advisor also says Jackson has been in and out of rehab for an addiction to Demerol and morphine, the latest time being in 1999. Weirder Story weirder. is never going to go away, is it? Keep it on KION. More news after the break with Rosalinda and Alan Martin. And the 7 o'clock news, that's next on KION. Tonight.